This Liberty Sports Update is brought to you by Beacon Credit Union. You know, celebrating a win, man, that's, uh, we don't ever take that. Yesterday's about the truth, and the truth uh, first is we found a way to, uh, to grind out a win. Um, frustrating part about the truth yesterday is it shouldn't have come to that. Um, we, we did not um, execute very well in the, in the red zone. And um, I did not call a great game. It starts with me, and um, and trust me, no one's harder uh, on watching a film on themselves than I am in regards to uh, play calling and having answers to to what they're doing. They played us different. Um, I kind of felt they would, uh, but didn't know exactly what that would look like because of the structure of their defense, which is a, a little bit odd. There's only a few people in the America that run that. It's the first time I've gone against it. I, I have better answers now, but um, should have come up with with better ones for Buckshot. I didn't uh, didn't didn't coach him well enough, and and there's times that he didn't execute, you know, what was called very well. But it, it starts with me, and then in the run game we got beat on some some stunts, uh, one of which we hadn't seen in short yardage. That's very very frustrating. So there's a lot. The great thing about yesterday is it's e it's a lot easier to 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 be about the truth uh, when you when you've won. So offensively, we left a lot of points out there. Fumble on the one yard line, miss a 30 yard field goal, drop a touchdown pass on what was a good call and a good throw, and he walks in. Any of those plays, you know, the game is over and and. We're not having to field an onside kick, which, by the way, was the best onside kick I've seen since they changed the rule. It, it stayed in the air forever. And, it's in, and uh, man, uh, King, Damon King just, uh, man, what a phenomenal play he made there because it's no way you can hold them off of you when it hangs in that air, air that long after two bounces. It was a phenomenal kick. And, uh, you know, we executed pretty well on special teams the whole night with the exception of the missed field goal. Defensively, I thought it was one of our better games with the exception of, you know, three third down runs by a really good athlete. But we kind of um, blew that. We had a guy blow an assignment on two of them. But uh, so we got to get those corrected because they will count. And it's like I showed uh, I mean, my memory remembers every play. And, you know, when they kicked that onside kick, it was 40 seconds on the clock. And looking back at the last possession, there's so many opportunities where we use that 40 seconds. If we just we run a little naked bootleg and four-minute drill is drilled every week. And the worst thing that can happen is an interception. The second worst thing that can happen is an incomplete pass. And, and it was incomplete, and that's just unacceptable in four minutes because you know just run and lay down, and we use another 38 seconds. And now, even at the onside kick, it may be two seconds left, and that's used on that kick, even if they get it. So, man, I, I want us to learn from that, and I want myself to learn, our staff to learn, you know, everything, because there's so such a winning and losing is such a small, small margin um, at this stage of our program. And and fortunately, we uh, we won it, and we celebrate that, and we want to learn from it, and now go and focus on winning another game. New Mexico State is a scary team to me. Um, uh, their record may not reflect it, but look at the schedule they've played. It's, it's, been, it's been pretty brutal uh, for them and the schedule they've played. But Coach Martin is doing a not very nice job with, uh, with scheme. Uh, the quarterback is, uh, you know, Atkins is, he's already got 206 attempts. Um, it's a Tony Franklin system. We haven't defended that before. That's a little scary to me because you have to do a few different things and, and our kids have to have the capacity to, to change in about three days some, some different coverages that we'd like to do that we think are going to be helpful. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's a little uncomfortable because I think we're playing so many young kids. If we could just stay in the same world you know, the whole every week, I think they would get better and better. But we're going to have to make a few changes this week. The tailback is the probably outside of a, one that Lafayette had. He's the most explosive player we've seen with the ball in his hands. He's really, really dangerous, uh, Huntley. And so two receivers, Clark and Nicholson, have caught tons of passes. But you expect that in this Tony Franklin type system. So uh, we got our work cut out for us defensively again. 
uh, to slow this this team down. Uh, defensively, um, they they've um, I don't want to pronounce the DC's coordinator spent. Spanzani, I think it is, but uh, he, he does a really nice job, mixes up his coverages very well. Got two interior defensive linemen that are really disruptive, uh, sort of like the ones we had from Hampton that just really are always on the move, quick twitch, not overly sized, but um, and super quick, and um, they're always on the move. So we've got to handle that or it's going to create a lot of negative plays for us. So uh, their best uh, D lineman, in my opinion, is Lopez. And uh, he's really disruptive and uh, can cause problems. Our special teams are very solid also. And uh, I don't know if altitude there is kind of what that does to the ball, but they're kicking it a long way. So um, they're, they're impressive. It's our, my first real trip on the road because I didn't feel like Lafayette was real to me. I was still in, it just didn't feel right. Um, uh, we have an open week after this. Uh, our team yesterday, I always do the truth and then I tell them kind of what my thoughts are of the week. And this week's theme is, is seeking wisdom. Uh, it comes from uh, the traveler's gift, which is what we're going through. But it's, uh, um, I, I think that um, we look at this week as a one game season, is the way I approach it. And it's the way I want our kids to approach it and give us wisdom in, uh, in approaching it that way. And then, so I kind of divide our season up into segments. And this is uh, this is the last game of, of, of this season, season one for me. So um, that's the way we approach it. We got one shot, it's on the road. Um, I have no idea, I've never played there. I've talked, I just got off the phone with one of my good buddies that has gone there several times and kind of got the landscape from his opinion. So I just, I don't want any surprises. I want our kids totally prepared and totally focused on uh, on this last game of this season. Coach, you talk about New Mexico State being a scary team. Uh, when you play a team that's 0-5, does that make them a little more scary just because yeah. they have so little to lose? Maybe they'll take some more chances, or is there some of that to it? Yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, you, you see their numbers, and they've been competitive in a few games that could have gone their way. And, again, their schedule that they played is a very difficult one. They played very well against Fresno last week. And uh, so I, I see improvement as, you know, from the Alabama game to the, to the Fresno game, you see a lot of improvement to their New Mexico game where they scored 50 points last week, you know, or two weeks ago. And then they play a Fresno State team that I think is talented, very difficult. So I think they see, um, they will view us as, as somewhat of a, of a more equal opponent, whether that's right, wrong, or indifferent. I think that gives them the feeling they have Liberty at home. They played Liberty tough last year, won one of those games, and they've shown improvement. So uh, I think that, um, that it's just a scary game. It's at their place, and they have people that can beat you. Um, it's a winnable game for both teams. Um, I, I tell you, usually it's a winnable game or it's a toss-up. Those are going to be my two. And I think this is one of those games. I believe that. And when I watch them on film, we're not at a we're not at a state right now where we're deep enough to walk into any game that's on our schedule and feel like I shouldn't say any game. There's some where I think we're better, uh, but not many. Looking at your team on a three-game winning streak now, how do you feel about the way things have improved from week two? Um, I mean, I like to win. So I feel good, um, but yeah, you know I don't think any coach is ever really totally satisfied at where you're at. Like I said, I'd feel a lot better today had we put up the, I mean, easily 30 points in the games out of hand. That, that disappoints me and myself. And um, and man, I've got to, I've got to coach them better, and I've got to have a better plan. Um, we can't get in the red zone and and um, just miss out. Three opportunities down there. Two should have been touchdowns. If we just execute one, should have had three points for sure. Or maybe more if we just execute on third and inches, which is a critical down that we preach all the time. And it was a bad call. It was just a bad call by, by me and, um, and our staff that um, you know, we put our tight end in a very difficult position with, with what we chose to do. And it was totally against my gut. And, you know, I know better. So. You mentioned Huntley earlier as a returner. 
uh, averaging, I believe, 34 yards, kick return, uh, dynamic in the punt return. I believe yeah. he has two or three returns for touchdowns in his career. Uh, is this going to be one of the tougher challenges on special teams you guys have faced this year so far? Absolutely. We, we're going to kick it straight to him and hope he doesn't catch it. No, we're, you know, we're going to uh, – that guy's dangerous. I don't know what our plan is exactly. Uh, everybody's kind of scattered on Mondays in their own little it's, – it's interesting if you go find where your coaches are on Mondays until 4 o'clock, which is when we get together. But, man, they, uh, everybody's different. You know, I see Mo, he likes to go down here. Sam likes to be over here. I have no idea where Tanner is. I don't know. I just trust him, and he's done a good job. And, uh, and he'll give me a report tonight on what the plan is, and, uh, but I'm sure he'll come up with one. You mentioned Saturday about playing complimentary football with not going tempo, which you said is against everything that you've been brought up to do. Where do you found that balance of trying to make sure tempo-wise you're keeping the defense as fresh as possible while also being as efficient as you can on offense? Yeah. You know, uh, this theme's a good one for me, seeking wisdom. Um, you know, there's times I think I, sh I should go tempo and, and maybe our kids would play better because that's the way they practiced all fall camp. Um, and so at some of the starts of the game, I am calling some of our, our warp speed stuff. But then when we get a lead, and I know we're, our, our, our depth on defense is so thin, um, I would love to get through that game and see the defense only had to play 60-something snaps. That, 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 that is kind of my mentality in certain types of games. Um, are we ready to go warp speed? Um, not, not to the extent that I've been in the past, but we do have a package. It's smaller, um, but it is totally against my nature uh, to, to milk the clock. But it's something that I just believe that is uh, beneficial to our team in some of the games we've played. Will it be this week? I don't know. I'll seek wisdom on that. But um, just so far in the games I've played, I just in, the, in my off time that I had where I did some consulting with different coaches and – um, had a time to watch a lot of games. I just became very convicted of this this idea of what is complimentary football look like, and is which what is best? Uh, because when you're coming through the OC ranks, it's selfish, and I admit it, it's selfish. But it's just how many plays can I get, and how many points can I score? And that's the the mentality that 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 I brought into head coaching, and it worked for me for for. You know, many years. Um, my last two years at my previous stop, we should have played more complimentary football. We were very good on offense and not very good on defense. And um, I put them in a bind a lot of times, losing games 50 to 55 to 51 or whatever the one was that kept us from going to the, to the championship game. I'll never forget it. But, um, you know, I just – in my in my years off and talking to other coaches going into their programs and listening and um, I became pretty convicted that maybe I didn't I didn't intentionally do it to, to hurt our team obviously but man maybe I need to take a harder look at uh, at what that what is best for the team and so that's kind of the way I approach this tempo world right now I know you didn't like his fumble, but with that aside, were you pleased with uh, Buckshot, the way he was able to use his legs on Saturday mm -hmm. night, not just picking up yards, but extending drives and plays? No question. He, uh, he avoided, uh, I think, three sacks. Protection was pretty good all night. Uh, there were three times that they got us and um, either won a one-on-one -on -one or, or put, a, put a move on us that uh, twist or something that uh, we just didn't get picked up. Uh, tailback missed. Uh, we had great protection one time. The tailback chose to cut uh, a linebacker, and you know, I, if you're going to do that, you better you better do it with your eyes up and and at least knee high. And he didn't, and the guy was able just to leap right over him and get right in our face, and and Buckshot eluded it. Which um, so I, I'm uh, we're working hard on his pocket presence. Um, we got to continue to work on his ball security in the pocket and out of the pocket. But yes, um, you know, when you come out of a game with no sacks, that's, that's definitely a positive, and he's done some, some better things. Hey, Jack, I know you felt like you left a lot of points out there.
there offensively, but you got to be thrilled with your defense and the progress yeah. that they have made the last few weeks. Yeah, I hope I, I hope I haven't uh, talking about the offensive portion. I hope I haven't overshadowed the fact. Uh, I know I didn't in post game, but our, our defense played really really well. Um, they they they, uh, they really played well. Staff had a great great plan. Had a great plan on third down of spying that quarterback, and he just uh, you know he was. He was a better athlete a couple times, and, and we didn't do it correctly a couple times, and it hurt us. And then they did two things to us that we hadn't seen, speed option into the boundary. We hadn't seen that. And then three backs motioning to the field hurt us. On a, they gashed us on an inside run there, and we hadn't seen that. So um, the things that we had seen, I thought we defended extremely well. You guys have built some confidence here at home, obviously. Now you get set to go on the road. In your experience, what are some of the characteristics of a good road team? Mm -hmm. Mental toughness and focus. Those two things. Nothing distracts you. Nothing bothers you. Uh, we don't. Uh, it doesn't matter where we play, what they say, where they are, how many are there. It, it doesn't matter, and they'll hear that all week from me. I actually like it. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I'm, I'm a weird guy with some things, but I'm like great. You know, how hard can it be? And, you know, I played to coach the first game in A&M's new stadium. And it was 110,000 of them and maybe 3,000 of us. And, man, I just loved it. And I told and that's all I just talked about all week. I can't wait. And I think our kids take on that persona if they hear that from us, hopefully. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll see. But, um, but I'll, I'm, I'm excited to, to go test it out. Right now with the running back rotation, it seems like Joshua Max starting to emerge and get more carries. Mm -hmm. Is that by design, or are you trying to keep as many guys fresh yeah. so that way as the rotation goes on through the year, you guys have fresher backs as the season goes on? Uh, no, it's not by design. It's by the fact that he's learning how to practice, and that's just the truth. He hasn't. He didn't know how to practice uh, when we got here, and uh, I don't think he'll mind me saying that. I've tell, told him that for a long time, and. As he started to learn how to practice, uh, his playing time has increased. And so it's not a talent issue. It's not uh, anything other than w you can't be given anything. You've got to practice like the rest of your teammates. And once you start doing that, you're talented enough to get your shots. And uh, he's made the most of them thus far. This is a new week. We'll see how he practices. And uh, I know how Frankie's going to practice. I know how Peyton's going to practice. And I think he's learned that now, hopefully, and he's seen the success that comes with it. So I expect nothing but what he's done the last few weeks and that his uh, carries would continue. To those of us that have been here for a few years, Rouse Rusins is kind of, was kind of an unknown before this mm -hmm. year. Um, you know, have you seen a lot of, has you and your staff seen a lot of improvement in him from the spring to now? Mm -hmm. And, you know, is he still very raw in his development? Yeah, I think um, I'm glad you brought that up. When I woke up this morning, that was one of the first things that hit my mind after thank you, Lord, for another day. Uh, he, he actually came to my mind and I said, man, I need to praise him today because he played a heck of a game. And he did against Syracuse, too, and he's played solid. But, I mean, these the Syracuse game in the last weeks really stand out. I think Coach Aldridge has done a really nice job with him. He's a big, burly, strong kid. Um, not as quick twitched as maybe some, but he's, he's overcoming that with effort. And um, I'm really pleased with him. And I think... Uh, I think he's going to get better and better and will be, you know, one of the stars returning next year, you know, for us. So um, real pleased with him. He's a funny guy, too, you, as you get to know him, because you think he won't say a word. And uh, he was describing for me yesterday how his sudden movement caused him to jump off sides, and it was, it was hilarious. You should get him, if you're interviewing him, you should get him to describe that. Coach, what's your biggest concern heading into uh, New Mexico State? What, uh, what worries you about uh, what they can do against you? Well, the same things that I worry about every week, and that's just, uh, you know, our kids' execution. Not, not really, I mean, obviously we've got to tackle their tailback and um, defend all these passes and crossing patterns and picks and, you know, all the things that come with this type of offense. Um, I've got a good film for our defense to study from my past where we played this, that our, our DC, Dave Womack, did a great job defending. So we'll, we'll use every resource we can to, to, uh, to make sure we're prepared for that. So, I mean, facing something new kind of concerns you. But my, my concern is about us, really. 
uh, going into this game and how we handle the travel, how we handle the food, how we handle the prep, how we handle fall break, how we handle the nights of this week. And, and um, you know, our kids, are they mature enough to not pat ourselves on the back, hey, we won three in a row, but to see, man, we got one game season left and we everything besides academics and our social decisions, everything else should be about this focus on this one game. And are we ready to approach it that way? I don't know. Um, I'll know a lot more after tomorrow's practice, but uh, that that's my concern is, is just us. You said you wanted to kind of get the lay of the land out there. When you go somewhere new, what are some of the things that you like to find out about the venue, about the city, just about everything when you're going there? Um, I'm uh, anal about this football program, so – if I have a surprise, I'm upset with somebody. So, uh, you know, I don't know how I can state it anymore. You can ask Coach Nichols and Paul, but I don't want to, I want to know everything. And I expect to know everything. And uh, so from hotel to the buses to the drive to the locker room to the size of the lockers to where I'm having a team meeting to uh, the food, um, What's the, the noise, stadium size, how close are the stands? I, I don't. I ask every question that I can possibly think of. Switching gears to the injury front with Bejor and Devontae Lloyd specifically, uh, where are they at at this point? Are you hoping to get them back this week? Uh, hoping. Um, they Bejor looks better and better. How f how far will he come this week? I don't really know right now. I think Lloyd's probably a little further away than Bejor. Um, so hopefully Dabney looked good yesterday, so hopefully we'll get him back. Um, if we can get him and Bejour back, it sure will help the uh, secondary rotation. You mentioned how the Lafayette game was kind of a, a weird experience with you having to fly there separate of the team. What's your plan for this week and plan on playing with the team out there and doing your normal uh, weekend uh, with the road trip? I, I'm not sure. I haven't talked to our administration or Jim yet about that, the plan to get me there. I'll be there one way or another. Um, you know, am I ready to sit straight up for, for the four-hour flight? I don't know. Um, I hadn't talked to the docs about any of that yet. I don't sit down much in the office. I, I lean over on that walk or some when I get tired of sitting, just it does not feel good to me uh, yet. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't know the plan. I sure would like to fly with the team, if at all possible. So, but we'll we'll cross that bridge uh, sometime this week. Since you got here uh, in December, depth has been a big thing that you've talked about. And if you look at the score by quarters, it's kind of a tale of two halves. Um, would you attribute that to depth? And how? What are some things yeah. you can do to try to combat that? Uh, truthfully, um, in Again, take out the first two games. Um, I think they may skew that. I don't know if they skew it or not, but in the uh, remaining three, um, I attribute to the fact that we changed who we were offensively. I really do. I think we could have scored more points. Now, this last one, we certainly were trying, um, and we just didn't execute. So, I, I mean, it's just us. We just – we should have scored 17 to, to 20 points more in the, in the second half, and we didn't. Um, so, and the others, I really slowed it down trying to get the game over, really slowed it down. And we probably would have been more efficient if uh, on the scoring by halves if, if we would have tried to just continue being who we were. But um, I didn't think that was best for the team at those moments. So I think it's uh, outside the first two games, the, the last three, I would say, we're, we're, we were trying to, like heck to score the other night and just didn't get it done. Uh, the other two, I think we were, we scored enough when we needed to, and then we controlled the clock the other times. So a combination of all that. Something a little off the beaten path wanted to ask you about, just how cool is it to be at a place where Brett Favre shows up on a Friday before a game yeah. and you're able to visit with him and yeah. bring your players in? <laughs> it's funny you say that. So Brett and I are good friends. We, we go way back to Southern Miss where we were at school together. And then obviously he's a Mississippi boy and we both like hunting and fishing. And well, he likes a lot more hunting than I'm more of a fisherman. I've never really gotten into the hunting, but uh, it's always fun when you have some downtime to go to hunting camp 
with the guys, you know, that's fun. And so he's a, he's a, a, a man's man. He is what he is. And, uh, man, I just love that about him. And he's, uh, he's fearless with the way he played. And actually when, uh, you know, Buckshot came off after that last possession where we ran the little bootleg and he threw an incomplete pass, um, I said to him, dude, I knew I shouldn't have introduced you to Brett Favre. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, he was just – Brett was so fearless in the way he played. And, you know, he's a Mississippi legend. And uh, I'm blessed to call him a friend. And um, thankfully came and shared with uh, the Liberty students. I think they enjoyed it.